Let's go out in the hall. Yeah. So you got which are 49th Street, Large Wood, East Baltimore. You can see the basic areas, right? Okay, I'll get somebody else for you. Get your Okay, good. See ya. Can we have one? I got you. Who's yours? Are you going to lose it? Yeah. No, we need one. I need one person to go with another car to do lit drops. You come go. Yeah, go with Charles. Go with Charles. Um, is this the congressman's district? They get feet. Charles. Yeah. I need Charlie. Where's Charlie? Let me go check. He's around the corner. Hey, Charlie. Come on. She needs you outside, Go to Baltimore and work your way back as quickly as possible. Okay. okay. Try to do it in the house. They going with us? Okay. All right. To Baltimore. What? I thought you supposed to go watch No, we gonna come back and everybody's gonna leave at the same time. Start, we're gonna start on Baltimore Avenue. Okay. I'll deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Me. Right. <laughs> <Filming everything. laughs> Carrying stuff to the car. What you need? 
redundant. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, yeah. Where'd you yeah. get it on? You got it underneath the, the, the yeah. rubber? Yeah, right, right underneath the rubber. It, 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 will, it, will, it will touch it. It will hook up. Three people. Somebody do the sound. Okay. All right. So you I can't you? drive and do sound. Well, one of the people in the car could do the sound. That's all. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So, Robin, I'll write you uh, up a slip for sound. Okay. Okay. Well, let me see. Yeah. Uh, there. Uh, yeah. They know everything. They can tell you more about it. Yeah. Where's the movie? Yeah. Before they go across. Huh? I need 10 bundles of literature for this air van right here.
United States, that's the federal the government part of the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, Congressman Bush. Okay, so wherever she would go, I mean, that would be the max. But that max is based upon what your income is. So if your income is too high, you're going to cut it down to whatever. I'm going to take this out. Turn on the person's income. That way, everybody can Uh, she was at one time. I don't know if she's still in the Okay. This is the main number. And you'll have to go through the main number. Okay. Maurice, you got bikes there? Is he coming back here? No, we're going up. You know what? Let me call him. They can better go with him because uh, they're going straight to Ann. Yeah, they're going straight to Ann. All right. Sounds not working. Ladies and gentlemen, Congressman Lucian E. Blackwell is on his way to your community. He will be there today to see each and every one of you. Congressman Lucian E. Blackwell has come to your community today to say first to each and every mother of the 2nd Congressional District, Happy Mother's Day.
Pollution Blackwell politics is no game. Clarity says things do change. Scientists break down the cosmos, but truth feeds the human brain. A first pollution is a force for change. Jobs for the jobless, shelter for the homeless, a cure for AIDS. Education is a must. Democrat will repent to the God we trust. Fears and color pride. Feel the cat. It's take a try and we'll never look back. Still here, huh? Yeah. Right. yeah. Hi. How are you? How are you, you doing? doing? Okay. How's it going? How are you doing? Hi. Huh? Hi. How are you doing? That's my daughter there, Valkyrie. Oh, yeah. How are you? Okay. How are you doing, buddy? How are you doing? Sir? How are you hey, doing? hey. Stop speaking to me. You're talking to me in church. You're talking to me in church. Yeah, he's doing all right. He's doing all right. How you doing? Is he in here? He's not in here. He came in yesterday. He came in yesterday. He told me to make sure. Okay, I'll call him. Thank you. I'll call him. Yes, sir. He didn't give you his number, did he? Uh, you know, I, and I got it. I don't have I got it in my book. Yes, sir. He wants to give you his number. Thank you. Hi. Yes, sir. Okay. Did everything call you? Yeah. Okay. I told him, how are you? Okay, I told him to call me until you're ready. Okay, how y'all doing, right?
South Philadelphia. You know, we got the advanced team down there now. Yeah. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you mean on, on, on the tribune, you mean? Uh, yeah, no, they, they wanted me the other night, they, but they wanted me to. Uh, I was in Washington and they wanted, they wanted me to rush back to do it, and I couldn't. But, but, but that don't mean anything. Yeah, but guess what? It, guess what? It doesn't mean anything. The people out in the street, though, you see, I, that's why I was sorry that you called in yesterday, because you can't defend me. Let me defend myself. Don't be defensive. Doesn't mean a thing. No, 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 but you, no. Yeah, but I'm gonna say, but you don't have to do that. So let it go, yeah? Let it go. We're satisfied. Don't, 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 don't do that, because don't, don't, that, that shows that's true. And, and you don't have to do that. Yeah, 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 let me, let me tell you what, why that's even curious. When people start lying like that, it means that they know they're behind. They know they're behind, so they have to lie. See, if, if you thought he was just going to kill you, you would be acting like a statesman, acting like a gentleman. People act like a gentleman when they, when they know they're behind. Right. He knows he's behind. You know what I'm so, so he has to come out with negative stuff. That's what he said. I'm saying, but don't, but don't even about it. Okay. What up? Yeah, but don't worry. Well, don't worry about it. We're doing all right. Okay? Thanks a lot. Bye. Uh, is this the that? Uh, would you have somebody to give me a, a, a Diet Coke, please? Okay, yeah. Oh, he's going down there? Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, man.
I come from a poor neighborhood. You come where I come from, you know whiskey can do. I don't. I hope they take it and throw it in the river. Don't ever bring it back. Yeah. You know. I see you too guys, much. You want to talk to the congressman from the end or something? You did that already. Or? No, they. Yeah, we're just trying to get to scenes, but uh, we can do that. On batteries, but uh, who's got a better call? He was just telling me that his camera was better than yours. <laughs> Mine's bigger than this. Yeah, but, but, but Goliath was bigger than, bigger than David, too. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on our way as soon as my sister gets here. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for my sister, okay? Okay, thank you. But we're not, we're on time, all right? No. Okay, we're not late. Okay. Listen, my wife's, listen, my wife's going to, uh, She's gonna fill in for me in some places today. I can't make them all. Okay. Would you would you fax my wife? Uh, no, my schedule is, is Wilma here. You get her to tell her to fax my wife my my schedule. Yeah, she's at home. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Congressman, how important is it for you to be in different places? Today? Oh, it's very important. Uh, you know, it's, this time is uh, is winding up now and. Uh, People are excited. We peaked at the right time. And you know, it's the one thing about politics, you know, I've been in the game a long time. People always worry. They want, to, they want you to start like in December. They want you to start in January. You're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. But you don't really start moving until, you know, you do your, all your preliminaries uh, in, say, February. You start getting your, your petitions. And then when after at that last a month, and then after that, you, 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 you start having the award meetings. And then after that, you start getting a few buttons. And, but you, but the people who love you and who want to, they, that's, they, they swear you're not doing anything. But the thing is, you have to peak at the right time. And we're peaking at the right time. You know, people know me. It's not like I'm a new guy. You know, they, their polls show that 96 percent of the people in this town know me, even the kids in the region. So I'm in good shape in terms of my recognition factor. And I, and I believe that my, uh, I think that the fact that we have, uh, uh, when you okay, when you speak, uh, when you speak uh, uh, forthrightly and honestly and candidly. Uh, about the press sometimes, you know. But then they decide, well, we want somebody else, you know. And that's what's going on now. But they didn't support me in 91. They didn't support me in 92. They didn't support me now. Watch, I'm going to kick the devil out of them, okay? You watch me. Watch me on Tuesday, okay? Hello? Yeah. Yes, uh, we're going to fax you something. We're going to fax you the schedule. Uh, the updated schedule, okay? All right. But, you know, it, it, but, it, but you know, it's unfair. You know, everybody says, you know, I say to the press, you know, you want me to be fair. You know, you want me to be honest. You want me to be open. You want me to do the right thing. You know, you want me to speak out on the issues. And when you don't speak out on, on, on the issues, then uh, if you're like uh, me, you know, I'm African-American, so you, boy, you're, you're a little arrogant, boy. Who do you think you are? You know, how dare you, how dare you tell us that, that we shouldn't write the way we write? You know, we, we can do what we want to do. We can destroy you. But don't you dare answer us back, because see, we, we, we buy ink by the barrel for, you know, allowed to do that. You know, see, but see what this is? This is a, reli a religious book. This is a pulpit commentary. And some are strong believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm not just a politician. I believe in a lot of things. And they tell me, uh, well, well you, you care too much about poor people. You're darn right I do. You're darn right I do. I'm not going to apologize for it either. I care about people walking the streets hungry. I care about people sleeping in the subways. But for the grace of God, I'd be right there because I come from poor neighbors. I was on, my mother and father were on welfare once. You know, I wore welfare pants. And had people holler down, welfare pants. It's welfare pants, you know. And I know how it feels for kids not to, not to have the things that they want. Even though I come from, I had a good family, a good mother and father. A little small corner store. As we grew up, I got one when I was about 14. Uh, my father went into the grocery business and he stayed in about 30, about 30 years. But before that, people, people, people forget we, we were just ordinary people. Father sick, father ex coal miner, sick, you know, had sick, and unable to work with a good man, good strong personality. When you see Mr. Black was speaking, I'm imitating my father. So I stole all my father's lines, you know. But he he was a good guy. Was know? he a politician? Well, yeah, he was. He was. He was a Republican, believe it or not. At that time. Uh, in, in our neighborhood, everybody was, was Republicans. It goes back to Abraham Lincoln, you know? Uh, he was a Republican. All black people were Republicans because we didn't trust the Southern Democrats. I didn't know at the time, but uh, I came, I, I, I started paying, uh, paying attention to politics during the Franklin Delano Roosevelt time. You know, I loved him. You know, and I, I, I remember my father saying once, it was, I was about to, the war was over. Uh, I was about to 13, I think, 12 or 13. And, Germany surrendered, and I went and got, I got the paper for my father. And I came in, and uh, I started reading about Germany. Germany had surrendered. My father said, 
that happened three days ago, and you, and you just noticed that? I was real embarrassed, you know. He said, my God, boy, you're a boy your age. You didn't know the war was over, so I paid a lot of attention to, uh, to uh, politics since then. And then I wrote a, uh, a report once on politics uh, in, uh, in uh, junior high school. And I, I wrote that, uh, I don't know why, but I always felt that politicians owe something to the people they represent. And I said that, uh, and, and then I wrote that uh, all, if any politician elects an office and it doesn't do what the people want him to do, and I was, I was a young kid, I said, I'll take him down and chew him down like dogs. My father said, no, 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 no. They, they should remove him from office, not shoot down like dogs. So, I, so he taught me, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't realize really, I didn't realize what I was saying. Because, you know, you see all the cowboy movies and all that stuff, taking a bad guy out and shooting him down. I guess that's what I thought. But that's why I feel the way I feel today. I come from poor circumstances, good people, good, strong neighborhood. And I believe that uh, poor people have, have the right in the greatest country in the world. This is the greatest country. I've been to 33 foreign countries. Just come back from Russia. This year I've been to Beijing, I've been to the Philippines, I've been to Tokyo, I've been to Korea, and I just come back from, uh, from uh, Russia. And this is the man, this is the greatest country in the world. There's only one superpower in the world, it's the United States of America. Economically, now militarily, Russia might be the greatest, might be one of the greatest, but economically, they couldn't carry our shoes. Tell, tell, me, about, yeah. tell me about, you were saying something about that, uh, people who were, who were not endorsing, the white people not endorsing you? I didn't say white people. No. I didn't say that. No, no, you said that. All right, I, see. I Yeah, you said that. I said there are people who did not endorse me in 91. Right. They didn't endorse me in 92, and they're not endorsing me now. And some people try to make a big deal out of it. You know, when they do it, they, they call a press conference and they report, uh, this, 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 whatever, didn't, didn't endorse Lucian Blackwell. And I look at it and say, well, what else is new? That guy has never endorsed me in, in all the years I've been in. Been in, I, I've been running, and so uh, what's changed? But they try to create the impression that, that that's something new. You know, person, I beat a guy, I don't want to mention his name, I beat him uh, for the city council job in 1975. And he has never, ever, he has never, I, well, I'll tell you, this is not going to show now, right? So, I'll, no, so no, no. his name is Hardy Williams, Senator Hardy Williams. I beat him, I, I beat him good. He was supposed to be the, the top person in the city. Uh, we were in the state house together, he went there before me. And uh, I beat him in 1975 for my council seat. I stayed there for 16 years. The guy's hated me ever since. And every time he pretends he likes me, he, you know, and so when he, when he thinks he smells blood, he comes, you know. Now he's, he's out there again. Well, I'm not with Lucian Black one now. And it's just jealousy. You know, you have some people, you have some people in this town, you have, a, you have some warner bees, you know. There's never been anything that they're, they're, they have an elitist attitude. They think they're better than poor people. I'm not talking about Caucasians. I'm talking about people in, our community. And so they fight. I'm, I'm a working class person. I come from a working class background, so I'm totally unacceptable to them. Always have been, but I've beaten them in everything that I've done. Every time they tried to stop me, I have beaten them. And you know, as I read the, the scriptures, you know, uh, there was a carpenter's son who was totally unacceptable. You know, he was a little boy, and people said when he went away and came back, and he, he said he was the son of God. And they said, a carpenter's son? How could he, how could he be an important person? You, do you get my point? Yeah. Talk about, I'm talking so about. Do you think that people are embarrassed by you sometimes? No, they're not embarrassed. No, they're not embarrassed. I think they're afraid of me. I think they know I'm going to, I'm going to expose them for what they are. Uh, a bunch of phonies who hide behind their credentials, who have never done anything, never will do anything, self-serving, only do for themselves. They don't care anything about, about other people, and that's why we have so many problems uh, in this, uh, in this world. You know, we have some problems in our community that shouldn't be problems. The problem is because the leaders are not working together. You know, we, this is not a self-serving job. You're supposed to be serving people. Anybody that would criticize my wife and I for feeding the homeless, I'm like, come on, what are you talking about? You know, they say, well, you shouldn't be feeding them in the subway. Well, you give me a building, I'll feed them in your building. You have a building, I'll come to your building. They didn't say, well, Lucian, I think, well, who wants to see a little baby, a little baby asking in the subway that's with water running down and human, human waste uh, 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 smelling all the place? And, Urine right, smells all over the place. Who wants, to, who wants to see a little baby down the hall? Mr. Mr. Lucian, I don't, I don't want any meat. I only want potatoes. Now, that's like your little kid at home telling you, you know, but that little baby's there in a, in a cold subway because she has no, no place to go. Who wants to be in a subway on, on New Year's Eve feeding 300 homeless because they have no place to go? But they don't blame the, 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 the conditions that created the, the, that, that, that problem. They, 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 they blame the people who are trying to help the homeless. And that's, that's the contradiction. See, you, you don't understand the whole story, but that's a contradiction. 
So I could care less. All my life I've been labor leader for 30 years, had people fight me. This is child play. This is the stuff they've done to me for 25 years in my political life. They've fought me, and I have beat them each and every time. But it's not I that do it. It is the Father within me that does it. It's, the, it's what I read about in the pulpit commentary. See, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and, I, and I'm happy about that, and I'm going to do what he tells me to do. It doesn't matter to me whether they believe me or not. The fact is that we've been very successful in some of the things that we've done, but not all. Now, Mr. Coulson, why, why, why is Senator Tatar running again? Because he doesn't have to run this time. See, see he ran in, in 1991, uh, and he never got over the fact that I beat him. In 1992, five months later, he wanted to run, but he had to run for his seat. And we had a, a young fellow by the name of Benny Swans who announced that he was going to run for the Senate seat. He called him and said, why are you running against me? He said, well, you're running against Lucian Blackwell. I thought maybe you didn't want to. Oh, no, I didn't say I was running against Lucian Blackwell, so he backed up. So he got a free ride this time. He doesn't have to quit. He doesn't have to resign when he runs. He doesn't have to, uh, to uh, uh, quit. He's not running. So he figures if I, if, I, if I lose, I go back to the Senate. And if I win, I, I, I go to the Congress. Well, we're going to send him back to the Senate. We're going to send him back to the Senate. It, it's his cowardice, to tell you the truth. Now, he would probably tell you, well, in 1975, when Lucian Blackwell ran for the, for, the, for the council, he didn't resign. And that's true, but it was an open seat. There was no incumbency. It wasn't anybody that was doing a good job. I've been rated 100 across the board. Every, you know, AFL-CIO, the American for Democratic Action, the ACLU, National Student Citizens, the National Education Association, you know, the, the National Government Workers, National Postal Employees, uh, you know, uh, the National Student Association, the Human Rights uh, Fund, uh, the, uh, the, the Sierra Club just gave me a donation uh, uh, for an environmental issue. They rated me 100. Got 100. Down. I'm, I'm supposed to be on the honor roll in politics according to our philosophy. And you, I, you're supposed to give me a star and, 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 and make me, uh, and, and, and tell me, tell me to go to the head of the class. Here we have a guy that's saying 100s don't mean anything. He said something out there about, well, yeah, he's got 100s, but it just means that he's following the crowd. How do you follow the crowd? I've always, they tell me you take a test and you, and, and you get 100, you excel. See, so the guy is fresh. He's trying to divide, uh, uh, he's saying that, uh, that uh, uh, they need younger people because he's a younger guy. And I remember when, uh, I remember when Mondale said that to, uh, he, was, he was criticizing the Reagans. He said, you don't talk about my age. So I don't talk about any youth and inexperience, you know? So I think that, uh, that we need both. I don't think anybody can, can really win a fight trying to divide people racially, ethnically, uh, uh, by gender, or by age. I you think he's that, trying to do that? I think, I think that's what he's running on. He's running on these younger and more progressive. Uh, but the thing is, uh, he hasn't done one thing in Harrisburg. We say, well, if, you, if you've been so, so progressive, why aren't you running on your record? He 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 allowed he allowed uh, he allowed uh, someone to vote for him. He said on the, on 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 overturning gun laws here in Philadelphia when he got caught. You know he said well, we know why he did it because he was gonna get some little money to use in the campaign if he did it. Allegedly we we heard that. And then after he got caught, he told the people, oh I made him sick. I walked I walked to the bathroom and when I came back, someone had voted for me. All you have to do is get up to the mic and say, Mr. Speaker. While I was gone, someone inadvertently voted the wrong way. I appreciate if you, if you would correct the record. I, if, had I been here, I would have voted uh, no instead of yes. He, he, he didn't do that. And so they got the guy, uh, we're going we're gonna to have a little talk after this over. I'm going to tell him about it. It's called, it's called a character flaw. That's what it's called. Is, is, there any point? is my sister here? Is my sister here? Uh, okay, that's what I'm waiting for my sister. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm waiting for her. I'm waiting for her. I'm waiting for her. We're talking to Jim yesterday, and he said, when David yeah. Jim who? We were talking to Jim the other day. Oh, J yeah, Jim yeah, David? Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, he said, well, you know, con the con conscience is an old, it's an old-fashioned politician. He likes, he likes to express himself. He likes to meet people. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an old-fashioned politician. I am a politician. My father, we had a grocery store. You know, we were taught that you, the better you treat people, the better they'll treat you. And the fact is that I have run for office. I ran for council. I ran for the state house the first time, I had five opponents. The second time, I didn't have any. I ran for the city council the first time, uh, I had five opponents. The second time, I didn't have any. The third, the gentleman decided to run. I, I set a record beating him, so he didn't run anymore. So the fourth time, I ran for Congress, for the, for the council. I didn't, I didn't have a, an opponent. When I resigned to run for mayor, my wife ran. She didn't have an opponent. Uh, I ran for the, for the Congress. I had, I had two opponents. And fairness dictates by my record and by my philosophy and what I've done 
that I, that, that I not have a, an opponent, but we have this character flaw in a, in a young in a gentleman who decided, oh, I don't have to run this time. I can I can I can risk it. I can I can run because I, if I lose, so what? I just go on. But he's telling people, well, if you think he's he's the guy, just well just uh, well just uh, if you don't think I I can beat him, uh, well then well then reelect him. Someone said, well, we know you're not going to beat him, but we we, we just don't, don't understand why you're running against him because of his record. So. You just seem to be running kind of classic meet the people, hit the streets, sound truck kind of campaign. No, I know what I'm doing. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on radio. Uh, I'm on every newspaper. It cost me, it cost me over the weekend. It's, it's cost me from, from from last week to now about seventy thousand dollars. That's not old fashioned. That's new fashioned. It cost me about seventy thousand dollars in advertising. But you don't do not sit in an office and campaign. You have to go out and meet the people. Uh, we haven't done any television. Uh, because first I, I didn't think it was necessary, and so we spent my other thing. In addition to which, uh, I have a lot of grassroots support. People want to work for me. You know, you see it. You see them out there. Uh, if you go with me today, you'll see people. You'll you'll hear. Them. See, uh, they they respect me, and I respect them. And I, and I I and I love to talk to people. I love to look into their eyes and see what see what the, the, the message there, in terms of what the, of the kind of job that you're doing. This new way of of spending. Uh, two million dollars to get elected, it, 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 it leaves a false impression. It doesn't really tell who you are. And when they get there and start voting wrong, people say, what, my God, where did this guy come from? That's why we're having problems in, in, the, in the Congress. You need, people should know who you are, what your philosophy is. If you're afraid to walk, to walk among people, why should you be a leader? If you're afraid to sit down in a restaurant and have people come up and say, Lucian, what about, what about that gun bill yesterday that you voted? For or either against uh, why you can you explain why you did that? Lucian, why aren't we getting more money in our schools? Lucian, why are we having violence in schools where we're having it? Sometimes people want to see you not in a town meeting, but they want to see you walk in the streets. They want to see you go to the bank, go to the supermarket. And like an ordinary person, we're not we're not masters. We're we're, we're servants. And some uh, some politicians want to want to feel like they're above the people. Well, I've never felt that way. I feel like that I'm a leader, and I feel like I'm a good one. I think I'm trying to do my job, but I'm not better than the people that I represent. And anyone who calls going out and meeting people old-fashioned is because they don't under, do not understand. No, they're afraid to go because they know people are going to ask them some tough questions that they just might not be able to answer. I can answer the questions. It doesn't matter to me. You ask me any question you want to ask me, I'll answer. If I do not have the answer, I'll try to find it for you. And if you disagree, well, we have a little, maybe, maybe we'll have a little, uh, a little discussion about it. But there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the, the Dodgers lost a pennant one year because they all got this new sophisticated way of playing. You know? They didn't bunt, you know, they didn't hit and run. They did everything wrong. So the next year they went back to the basis of playing the game. And they won, and they won the World Series, I, I read that. See, I have been very fortunate and I've won the only races that I've ever lost. I, I lost two uh, races for mayor. That's the only thing I've ever lost, the, the union or here, and I was, a, I was, I was a, labor leader for 30 years and won every election, 18 years president, set a record in my local. Uh, uh, the, only, uh, the only race I've ever lost was the mayor's race. And uh, the second one I lost, I lost because they put some other, other African-Americans in it to stop me from winning. I, the polls showed that I, I could win the race. When, when they put two other African-Americans in, well then I, I came in second. And that's why I'm a congressman today because I won my community. And then after I won my community, after I won the uh, congressional seat, they, they, my opponent, who's the senator, then it's time to reapportion the district, so they went and took away all my major, uh, some of my major support, they gave me uh, uh, areas that were sort of foreign to me, hoping that somehow these people would not support me, and lo and behold, we got the prize cut, because I, I you know, I, I, I'm not a racist, I speak forthrightly, I, I treat everybody right, uh, regardless of race, creed, color ethnic background, sexual orientation, and the people themselves, you know, I, I, I have an excellent record with the state of Israel, 100% with that, and uh, you're going to see a lot of Jewish support for Lucian Blackwell out there on Tuesday. When I go up to Roxborough, uh, where we have a, basically a, a working class uh, uh, Caucasian people, they're, they're going to support me on, on, on Tuesday. They're in for a surprise. They're in for it. Uh, I had Mayor Mason say the other day, was it true that all, all you can get is the Poor people, poor. Uh, I think I think she said poor blacks. I said no, 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 no. That's wishful thinking on the parts of my opponents. They would like to believe that I can only get uh, elected in my community. I'm going to be elected. I'm, I'm going to win uh, Lansdowne. I'm going to win uh, uh, Yaden. I'm going to win Roxborough. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna at least get at least a third of of, of Chestnut Hill and and Center City. See, and this is gonna scare them. They're gonna say, "My God, how this guy do it?" They only, they only read the spirit. They only they only think about a spiritual connection. They don't know anything about the Lord. That's their problem. And I love them. I love them. I don't hate them because I, I I know they understand. They're like little boys trying to trying to be men. And, and, and intellectually they think that well I have the credentials so that means that I can I can do the job. You have to get experience. There's a passage of scripture in the in Old Testament that says, get wisdom. And then I get in, get all get on and then I get in, get understanding. You have to understand life to deal with it. If you understand life and you rush to get people out of the streets, you rush to get people a job, you rush to get people health care, rush to give people the very best that this country has to offer. And if you do not have that experience, and you think you're God's gift to everybody, and you say, well, I got it, and they got theirs to get. <laughs> okay. right. Is my sister here? Not for you. Is it okay to, uh, which one will be the 29th? 29th? Oh, we're going to do that. Okay. But the people, um, okay, we'll do it. All right, but I'm saying the people, you know, they're right. calling down at the other place, and if you want to, I can, we can bring your sister down and meet with you. She should be here right now. We're trying to get her now, okay? Your, your daughter tried to get her. Um, I talked to her. Oh, did you? Make sure you do the four. Did you finish the six years? No, I was going to go through the six years after the four. No, she's going the way down. She's going the way down. Yes. Uh, Audrey, you know, those, those things are here, you know that. Let me get a message. That's okay. You can okay. No problem. Okay. Um, Starting from the 49th, uh, 49th and Walnut. Drop 1249 Street, 1248th Street, 1247th Street, Worcester Baltimore Avenue. Took them back up, bring them down. 46, yeah, 45. Question. Are we finished the 60th today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 46. 46 is being done now. Wait, you have people on the 40th? I'm still going to order you to coordinate with him. I have him. He goes to Margo's. Yeah, Charles. Well, what I would do after they get to Baltimore Avenue, I'm going to drop them. I'm going to pick them up and get everybody to the 60th. Yeah, which I said being done now. Uh, Emmanuel and. Uh, well, you're doing it wrong. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you. Talk about that. We've got to talk about that. All right. Okay. okay. Okay, I'm going to pull him off, take him to 60, because she's already have somebody and she can do it. No, finish, finish the 46 together, and then, and then do the 60. All right. Okay. Jim? Yes, Jim. Jim? I'm going to go down there. We'll get down there. I'm going to have to leave. Uh, or they're going to have to bring my sister down, because i got to go. All right, you already got the advance. Huh? You already got the advance down uh, with Amber. Okay. Okay. Where's Jim? Jim, Jim, I tried to get you. I, I tried to get Howard, but but yes, but close B. Okay. Thank you. Who's that? Who's that? Two that? I'm going around here, sir. You got a key? Yes. Get around. Yes. Yes. Remember, you going to remember? Are you? You going to remember that song? Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's skip that. All right. Um, no, they're not here yet. I'm only kidding. Don't try to lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> now Wait, you hear sir, that? Would you mind? Turn off. Yeah, yeah. Y'all taking, Just our, this way, y'all taking our good music from us. <laughs> well, you know, we were. Uh, uh, That's what keeps us in the spirit. Yeah, uh, I understand. I mean, uh, there was the sound. One of the sound trucks. One of, one of your <laughs> the women working. Was, was testing it out and singing. She had a beautiful yeah. voice. Oh, yeah. Uh, you probably know which yeah, one I talked you about. Talk, well, you talking about, she probably talking about Robin? Talking about it wasn't, Robin. No, it wasn't we, Robin. Or Monica? Yeah, Monica? It must have been Monica, yeah. Monica's a good singer. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. she was She was great. She she's, was great. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. Well, what is it? I mean, one of the reasons we came down here is... Yeah. Oh, That's okay. Hello? Hi, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie, we're on our way. Yes, we are. Yeah. We're we're we we at Forty Street. We're just leaving. Yeah, we're almost there. Okay. Just okay. We're almost where? Yeah, where are you now? Where I say where? We're 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 we're, five, we're ten minutes away. Okay. Okay. 
I understand. Tell me, ten minutes away. That's that's that thing. Okay. Rep, rep, rep. You gotta pick up here. Follow the tide. Follow, okay. Come on, move away. How you doing? You better turn this blue air on. I think. How much tape do you have updated? Uh, I don't know. Did you check, it's please? Ten to fifteen. Do you have extra tape? Uh, well, yeah, but I only have partially. They gave me a they gave me a bad <laughs> bunch of tapes because nothing was going to be bad. We should go. We're not going to be long, so we should go ahead and do this. They tight them. Let's see. We get caught in these lights. They said you got some senior citizens down and get ready to leave because we're not there. Bring the mic at the east side. Just what were you, you, were, you were saying something, you were doing this for what? It's for public television. Mm -hmm. And we're doing five hours on American politics. Five hours? Five hours. Oh of course, that's not a lot. You're going across the country, right? That's right. Next week, we're off to Montana. Okay. To the Crow Indian uh, tribal leaders. Okay. That's great. Yeah, well, we're, see, we're risk real interested in the way politics is practiced here. And, uh, yeah. And that's why I was at, you know, it's, you're talking about traditional campaigning. I was curious, what, you know, what does that mean to you? Traditional well, traditional campaign? means that you get out and you and you do what we're doing. You, you, you open up upper, upper headquarters, you get the uh, local people to help you, you know. You... Hello? Hello? Yes? On 23rd, okay. All right. Yeah, Todd. Todd's leading us. We're gonna have to get in front of Todd then. Okay. Right on 23rd, on wa off Washington. Does Does Todd know it? Rev. Blow your horn, Rev. One second. You didn't. You didn't give me any extra tape. I have all. I have no new tapes. It's two. It's two Louis here. That's right. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. What'd you say? Yeah. He's gonna do it. Okay. So you're going to Utah next, you say? Montana. Montana. Yeah, we called them up and said they're having tribal elections on the Crow uh, Indian Reservation. Okay. And we said, so what are politics like out there? And they said, it's just like Chicago under Mayor Daley. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they play serious. Thank you. Well, I mean, what's it like around here? Would you say it's rough and tumble in Philadelphia? Well, I don't know. I, I think when you say under Mayor Daley, I think there's a derogatory, negative imp implication. Uh, it all depends on where you sit. You got, you know, in politics like anything else. In business, you have good and bad. You have rich and poor. You have honest. You have dishonest. The same thing in politics. You have honest politicians. You have dishonest politicians. So, you know, it's no different. I'm sure they got honest politicians in I'm, in, in Chicago because I know some. You know, um, I don't. I'm kidding about that. But uh, I, I understand when he says daily. I think he's he's implying something. You know? Well, I guess I guess we're talking about how, you know how serious people take politics. I mean, we were just in Virginia and you didn't see any signs, and here you see signs on every corner. Uh huh. And people seem to really care about it. Uh huh. Stop it, little boy, and, and, and get a paper, okay? Come on, man. Hurry up! You want to sell a paper or what? You have to, you have to in the rush, man. Now say thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Say thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I sell papers. Oh boy. Yeah, you good thing you don't have that particular problem. Yeah, man. <laughs> Well, I I, uh, I think you know this this thing spending having to spend when people have to spend two million dollars to get elected then there's something wrong. They haven't done anything. You know, I don't care who they are, what they are. When you have to when you have to when you have to spend I have never spent a lot of money for elections. My my opponent uh, in the last election that I beat him, he spent three hundred thousand dollars. Ten days before election, I had I had fifteen thousand dollars. I hadn't hadn't done any. Uh, 
fundraising and people started criticizing. Well, Lucian Blackwell thinks you're going to win the, win the election without campaigning. He got not thought coming. So I had, I had to get on the phone and call, and I raised about 80000 uh, But I, that, that's all I spent for the election. Uh, in the second, uh, when I ran five months later, my opponent raised uh, over $300,000 involved $50,000. I didn't, uh, I, 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 I raised about $150,000 because I was, I was the incumbent, and so I got a little more money. Where's the money go? Money goes to for uh, for a lot of literature. We put out a lot of literature. We've been putting out the, for lunches, for for tokens, for car fare, for gas, you know, for anything that comes up. Uh, 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 radio time. I, I imagine at times it be for TV time. I I, I, I don't I didn't even buy any TV time. We, we didn't think we needed. And uh, what's street money? People tell well, us. Well, street money is on election day. Uh, you get a lot of a lot of people who want to work for you. And a lot, there's, there's a lot of unemployment, and you 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 find and you'll get you'll get three or four hundred people to come up and say, "Do you need me today?" Now some will work for nothing because they like you. Yeah, but what we try to do is at least give them twenty four hours apiece if they work. They, they deserve something. Feed them lunch and then have a then have a little party, a little uh, victory party at night. But most of the people that work for me don't work for money. They they, they were doing anyhow. But we but you have to. You have, I, well, the war leaders, uh, when I run, I give them a little extra money. The, the Democratic Party gives them money. It's not pay, but they use money for uh, election day apparatus, putting the ballots out, working the polls, you know, uh, buying lunch for the people who work in the polls and things of that nature, paying the kids who put, your, put the ballots on the porches on election day. Uh, just, just doing it. It's, it's, it's no pay because there's really no money. You get, you get a, the Democratic Party gives you $100 per division. Uh, sometimes if, they, if they're doing well, it's a tough race, and you've got a lot of people running, they get a little more money from the candidates on, like on years when the judges run, they give a little more money, so they might give you $150. But when I run, I always give uh, the Democratic Party, I have 23 um, wards, I give the Democratic Party $1,000, to uh, $23,000, to give uh, an additional $1,000 to each, each ward in my in my district so that they can hire extra people if they need to, you know, <coughs> and let them know I respect what they're going for them. It's not, it's not pay. How, how can you pay people to do that? It's not enough money to do Do you monitor everything really closely? I was watching you before and you were talking about make sure you get the 49th, make sure you get the this and that. Well, I'm the leader. I'm the leader. And uh, I have to, uh, you know, I've been leader all my life since I was 25 years old in some capacity. And, I, and I've always been taught, my dad always taught us, uh, that to get anything done, you have to do it yourself. You know, if, if we give a party, I don't sit down and eat with the rest of the people. We're, we're around and supervising the party. You know, uh, 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 reception. I don't give parties. But leaders have to lead. Leaders cannot do what other people do. Want, want to be successful, you have to look for those little, little pitfalls and little, little things that happen that will cause you to, uh, to uh, not, not have 100%. Uh, and that's, that's why I'm always asking questions, just to make sure that uh, that's the way I want it to go. You know, I always tell people, my oh yes, well, it seems that it is the early, the early morning. You know, it's my, it's my experience that, you know, Saturday morning, we have to stay tight for them, okay? Early in the morning, it, um, people have things to do on Saturday morning, you know, they have more to do than just come out and listen to a politician. Yeah, yeah. Then around, I, I, you know, it made my experience around 12, so I was going to say, do you like you like the game of politics? Do you like well, I politics? like I like being a part of leadership of anything. I mean, all my life, when I was a little kid, I was the captain of the safety patrol. Uh, you know, in sixth grade, you know, and uh, I've always liked to be part of leadership, part of the person who makes decisions. And uh, my father once told me about when I when I was a little kid, he said, "We're leaders, we're not followers." And I, I believe him. You know, and my father, my father, me was one of the greatest guys ever lived. Because he, he he asserted himself as a leader in our community, and uh, uh, as I said before, I, I, I'm who I am today because of my father uh, teaching me. Uh, he always said, "Do the right thing first." He didn't say, "Do the right thing." He said, "Do the right thing first. Everybody can do it after it's, after it's happened. And he said, "You'll be and give the rest to the Lord, and it'll be all right." And, that, and that's been my uh, philosophy in life. So it's you know going from. Uh, from working on the waterfront, uh, shoveling iron ore, uh, to becoming a labor leader, becoming a foreman on the waterfront, uh, going to the state house, then to the then, then to the city council, and now and now to Congress and having. I, I I was even the, ch the chairman of the gas commission here for years. In addition to being a member of the city council, 
You know, they didn't raise the rates one, one time in four years. First time ever in the history of the Commonwealth that we turned down every request. Most of the time what they would do, if they want to raise the rates, they ask for a double what they want. You, 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 you debate the issue and then you give them half, a uh, portion of it, and they're satisfied. They, I didn't give a dime, not one dime, because they, they didn't need it. We, I had an audit, uh, uh, we conducted an audit, we found out that not only did they, did they not need the money, but I made them, we, we made them give them a little bit back, two million dollars back. So uh, I, I like being able to, people cannot solve their own problems if they look for leadership to do that. And the thing is, you have to be the right kind of leadership, the kind of leadership that cares about people. And I would like to believe that I do. And, and regardless, it doesn't matter what, what income bracket. Now, I helped to build a new, I, I was chairman of the committee, you're gonna turn right, Rip. I'm gonna turn right here, Rip. Uh, I was part of the leadership that, uh, that uh, built the new convention center, $550 million. Uh, I was part, uh, I was uh, part of the leadership that built the, uh, in fact, I, I, I pressured them to build Liberty Place 1 and 2. You see those two buildings come in? I was the guy who, when they said, don't, we, we can uh, build over, over Billy, Billy Penn's head. You know, uh, a lot of the work you see that's, that, that's been done with the businesses in and around the city over the years. And I was in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the council. I was, I was a major, I was one of the major players in that. See, so, you know, it, 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 uh, it gives you satisfaction. What about, I mean, there's also something, when, especially when you come and you see a campaign and they're getting the sound trucks out and looking at the ward maps on the wall and mobilizing the troops, there's something really exciting about that to me. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you also find that exciting and, and interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, yes, it, it's, it's, it's interesting, no, no doubt about it. Uh, uh, it it's exciting. Uh, sometimes you, yeah, sometimes when you just want to be home resting too. <laughs> see, remember, I, I, have to, I have to go to Washington in addition to this. Let me out there. Let me help, please. Thank you. Hi. What's the major difference between you and Chuck Mattel? The major, major difference is I have a record in Congress. I have a record. Of, and I've been rated uh, by the philosophy that he, is, that, that he supports 100%. You, you rated 100% down the line. It means you're on honor roll. It means somebody respects you. It means that you should be, be allowed to continue to do what you're doing. Uh, the one thing to, to run, it's an American run, but you ought to have a reason for running. That, that's the difference. If there's one thing you want people to remember when they go to the polls, what is that? Pull lever 18. <laughs> Aside from that, <laughs> well, about to, about to Lucian Lucian, Well, I well they're going to remember my record as I go through the streets. Uh, people are, are indicating me, uh, Lucian, everything's all right. We know who you are. We know what you stood for over the years. And this is when you're going to have You think this will be a second rate? person who told me that in the last two minutes. Yeah. So it must be evident. It's yeah. good. See, I'm not patronizing. Finally working. Now, I'm not patronizing. No, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> How's Washington? It's kind of missing. Let's it's see. Right. It's, uh, it, it's interesting. And you get to see a lot. You do a lot. Uh, uh, big influence on a lot of things. You know, I, I, you know I, I'm a chairman of, 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 of the vice chairman of the subcommittee. We, we, we think we're going to 
get about 50 people in the uh, team building, so I, I have an excellent chance in a very short time to become chairman of the other team. Play a lot of hardball down there, right? Yeah, man. Listen, with my experience, I tell them, it's good. It's just a new block, but I'm not going to get caught. Thanks. <laughs> okay. We know you're real busy, and, and, we're, we're, and we know we, we got another stop. So if you can just say something for about one minute. Or we're, two minutes. we're not too busy to see you because we right. have an obligation. <laughs> That's the people's person. We have an obligation to see you because you have always supported me. I know you're going to yeah. do the same for me this time. I can see it in your eyes. Yes, right. Things are good. The Lord's on our side. Yes, we're going yes, to win. Yes. Someone said to me, that, well, you believe in traditional politics, old-fashioned politics. No, I believe in coming out to meet people. Because if you can be, if you can vote for me, I have an obligation to come out and you say thank you. And so this is a, this is a, this is a good race. We've done what we had to do. We have a good record. Got all A's. When you, when you get all A's in anything, you should be on honorable. Was that right? We want to continue. We want to continue to do what we have done, and that is to represent you. And someone said to me, uh, "Well, Lucia only cares about poor people," and I say this. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. It's not over till it's over, right? It's not right. over until you know. I, I used to box, you know, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I used to trade with them. <laughs> so I, I can beat these guys who can't fight. Let me say this to you. I've seen fighters fight to the 10th round, get knocked out in the 10th round. So it's not over till it's over. Let's, let's work hard on election day, and we're going to sing hallelujah on election night. God bless you. God bless you.
They come to Washington all the time. We met with the secretary. I think that we're on the right track with the secretary. It just takes a little time. Some people are concerned about the money they say they're going to give to one of the housing developers that haven't have gotten here yet. But you, you must remember, you, you've had you've had 100 years of neglect. Mm -hmm. Now you're not going to, and, you, and you've also had the last 12 years of worse than that. Mm -hmm. We now have a president, and we have a secretary, and we have some Congress people who want to do something about it. It's a total disgrace to see what we see out there now. It's a total disgrace. It's a total disgrace. And I'm going to come and tell you that everything's all right because I know it is. And the fact is, you cannot give up hope. You've got to believe that there's somebody who cares about you. And the best proof is that the, the press is getting, uh, are beginning to, to <coughs> not criticize it, but they say, well, he just, he just dwells on, on that a little too much. Well, see, no one has to dwell on people who have money because they can take care of themselves. They want to make sure that we vote right and my record is 100%. You know, anybody who has 100% of everything, you know, when you, when, you, when you go to school and you get 100%, you take a test, they always say you're on the honor roll, and, 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 and they give you something for it. Now they tell me that uh, someone's going around saying that my 100% do not mean anything. Well, that's kind of silly. And when they do that, when anyone campaigns off my record, it's because they do not have a record. If they had a record, then they would campaign. So we're not even going to bother with that. All we're saying is that we, we're here to help you. We're going to do it, but God helps those who help themselves. Now, if you're thinking we're going to do it all, guess what? Forget about it. If you think I'm going to do everything you want me to do, forget about it. It's impossible. Because we have to learn to do for self, too. There's a lot of things that we can do and we're going to do. We saw some things last year. There's a story that has to be told after this election. And I want you all to help me. There's a story that has to be told about us. We're going to have to have a family meeting. Because there's things that we haven't done. Some things that lead to our, as leaders we haven't done. There's things that Lucian Blackwell hasn't done. Things that other leaders haven't done because we've been through self-serving, playing these games. As we go around, some reporters said to me, they say you like uh, traditional politics. You like to go around and impress the flesh. Well, what they're really saying is the people who say that, they're saying that they do not even have an obligation to come to you and ask for your vote. And that's kind of silly for anybody to say that this is old-fashioned politics. This is the way you're supposed to politics. If I want your vote, I'm, I'm supposed to walk up and say, sir, would you please give me your vote? I have no right to, to, to take out a, a television ad and, and tell you how great I am. You don't know me from Adam. You see, people look good, you know, you know all the glitters isn't gold. You, 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 you heard that. Everything that speaks right isn't right. Isn't it right? So we're going to have to learn to, by their words, you should know them. Not by their rhetoric. Not thank and praise God every day. I can care less about these people and this old nonsense about who's endorsing who. Those people didn't endorse me before. I beat them in 91. I'll beat him in 92, yes. and with your help, I'm going to beat him in 94. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. election day, all right election day, and work right. Your life depends on it, because you know why? When you have people who care about you, it's important that we stay there. So I, can, I, have, I do not have sympathy for you. I feel the same thing you feel. If I see a little baby in the street, eating in the street, a little baby would look up at me and I'll call a cold night and say, Mr. Blackwell, I don't want any meat. I just want some potatoes. And she's out in the cold, water running down the subway, and then have people say, oh, they, those people ought to be out of the subway. They shouldn't be down there. They're annoying other people. Yeah. And yet the same people that are saying that will not say, well, take them over to my house. That's right. yeah. That's take them over to my building. That's right. All they're saying is hide them. Take them away. When you give a bathroom, they are defecating in buckets, women in front of men defecating in, in buckets, urinating in buckets, yeah. and when they get the stench, they blame them. Yeah. And then when we, when we get the Johns put on, on the street, pay for myself, then someone says, oh, John shouldn't be there. How do you go to the bathroom? <coughs> How do you go to the bathroom in the street if you're here? If you do not have a, a toilet, then you would have to go in the bucket or, or, or the side of the wall. And that's the kind of thing that all people have been doing. And it has to stop. It. But you know who's going to stop it? We're going to stop it. Right. We're going to stop it by demanding collectively what we're entitled to. Mm -hmm. You're entitled to more than what you get. Mm -hmm. Y'all have been fighting for years. Y'all have been fighting for years. All your leaders have been fighting for years. Mm -hmm. I know every one of them. And they've done a magnificent job. If they had been fighting, you think it's bad now? <laughs> they had been fighting, it would been much worse. I remember when she used to come in, she wouldn't even smile at me. <laughs> she smiled. Now she would come to the city council. And she was looking at me like, yeah, all you politicians are bums. So I have to say this. Once she found out that I cared, her attitude changed. And I pray to thank God for all of them because they are good leaders. I'm going to follow their direction. I'm not going to do a thing without them. 
not the one blessed thing, that's how we get in trouble. See, I'm not going to come down and tell you what I'm going to do for you. Yeah. You have to tell me for your leaders what you want us to do. That's right. And we have an obligation to try to do that. We're going to do it. Work for us, please. I got to go. God bless you. Have a question. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna take all your cakes and and, and, and put them in my car, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Stop, 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 David. Where were we going now? Let's get him out of here. Let's go. Let's go. How are you doing? My sister's coming. My sister's going to be here. Good morning. Can I come out with you? I'm good. You want me? He has to go pick up my mom. Okay. So, where are we going? I'm glad that you can make it today. Well, thank you, sir. Why do you wait until Tuesday? Well, you are my favorite person. <laughs> Listen, I wonder. I saw you come outside from town this morning. <laughs> you have seen something. That's my sister. I'm, you can see that, right? That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's, our, she's a spy among the people. <laughs> where are y'all headed now? Where are we going? Um, where, where are we going from here? Is it Point Breeze? Where are we? Where are we? Point Breeze and Dickens. Point Breeze and Dickens. Yeah, Point Breeze and Dickens. All right. Point Breeze and Dickens. Yeah. Point Breeze and That won't show till a long, long time after the How you doing? Black Wall Records Museum. This record says that the National Council of Seniors has created Congress for the Black Wall. Hello. Look up, look up. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Okay. How you doing? Hey, man. All right. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on. 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 Right, good boy. Hey man, hey, how, how y'all doing? Hey. Okay, hey. okay, hi. How are you? Great. God bless you. How you doing? How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How you doing? Hey man, how you doing, buddy? How you doing? Fine. How you doing? Fine. You doing all right? Fine. Huh? Okay. <laughs> well, look at me, huh? <laughs> how are you? Hey. How are you? Fine, how are you? Fine, thank you. Doing all right? God bless you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. How you doing? How are you? How's it going? How are you doing? Fine, thank you. How are we doing? Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wish you all the love. Wish you all the love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, man. All right. Come on, buddy. Okay. You all right? Mm-hmm. Hey, man. How you doing, buddy? Okay. How you doing? How are you, sir? God bless you. Hi, Archie. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Jeff, you got a uniform today, man? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm putting the posters on. <laughs> I hate him. Hi. Hi, how are you? you? God bless you. Get around. Get around. Hi. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Somebody got a camera. Who got a camera? Who's got the camera? Oh, there's a camera. They're with you. They're with public broadcast. Somebody got a camera. Somebody got a camera. Hey, that's my camera. Somebody got a camera. Who got a camera? 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 Who got Listen, we, we just want to run. Listen, I'm so sorry that we're, we're running late. I know somebody here. We're so sorry we've been running just a little late. It's my fault. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you a story because you know Lord will That's all right. I just got a little white. A little white. We just we need your help on election day. But you know, I was in uh, I was in Atlanta uh, uh, campaigning for for President Clinton when he was running, and people were getting up and they, were, they went into a senior citizen's place and it was telling them what they should do. And so I stood up and said, Wait a minute. I don't have to tell them a thing. They know what to do. But they're not crazy and know how they're going to vote because they understand politics and what it's all about. So I'm not going to even bore you with the speech. Just say I love you. God bless you. Please help me on election day. And you know when you help me, you know I'm going to do the very best that I can because you know I, because you know who I believe in. Lord Jesus Christ. God bless Which means I care about you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, well, thanks for waiting for me. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Good to see you. Hey, man. You know who came this way? Charlie. 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 Well, 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 well. Huh? I said, you can I know you like that. Here. You know, I think you're the guy on the door. How are we going to go up here? Yeah. When you walk, you're going to walk down. Okay. Okay. That's where hey, you are. Uh, How are you, buddy? I'm working for you, buddy. How are you? Okay. How's it going? How are you? Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Where's my guy? Where's my guy? How y'all doing? How's it going, bro? Good to see you. How you oh! Hey! What do you think it's like? What do you think it's like? No. What do you say the missing? No. What do you say the guns are now? No. What do you say the violence? No. What do you say the education? No. 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 <laughs> Good morning. How y'all doing? On the trail. Uh, absolutely. You too. Yeah. What does he say? What do you say to drugs? 
No. What do you say to guns? No. What do you say to violence? Yes. Uh, no. What do you say to education? Yes. What do you say to God? Yes. Something he does, and he always hugs them and gives them a something he's proud of and he loves them. Uh, That's good. It's part of his appeal. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, it seems to work. And, and these little guys, uh, it was so cute, one of them. I said, do you know who that was? He goes, no. And the other one goes, Blackwell. I said, how'd you know? He said, the posters. <laughs> But, uh, and they said if they could vote, they vote for Mr. Blackwell. Shows you that advertising works. Hey. You know. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. yeah. I guess I better catch up with the okay. entourage here. Right. God bless you. Hi. How are you? God bless you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. How you doing? Hi, everybody. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, wipe my nose a little bit. Yeah. You got my yeah. Here. Wipe my nose. Here. Keep it. Here. 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 How you doing, man? God bless you, man. God bless you, too. God bless you. How you doing? How are you? Okay, good to see you. How you doing, man? Hey, man. How's it going, buddy? God bless you, man. Everything all right? Yeah. Help us out, all right? All right. Help us out. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey, Art. Hey, Art. Hey, Art. Hey, Art. Hey, Art. Hey, Art. Get my wagon, man. This is the president of the business association. He's doing the whole thing. You ain't reading it. Good. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, okay. 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 Okay.
How are you? Go to tax. Oh, that's it's wonderful. A five Congratulations. That's this from mother. Congratulations. Take you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Hey, you deserve it. How you doing now? Hi, right, baby. How you doing? Oh, yeah, be here. All right. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good luck to you. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, man. We got plenty of that. We got everything. I'm, I'm get I, I, I deserve a napkin when I buy stuff. get all that, brother. get all that. Baby, I want two napkins. Well, you get that too. You ain't saying nothing, brother. Anybody want one? Anybody want one? Yeah. Anybody want one? Yeah, you too. Want one? Yeah, me yeah. too. You ever said anything, Swift? You ever said anything? How are you? How are you? I'm fine. How are you, ma'am? Fine. 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 I'm going to pay for it. You pay for it. Thank you. You don't want nothing? Good time. Good time. No, I'm going to wait till you leave and I'm going to run. Like I used to do. Like you used to do. Like you used to do. Thank you. 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 What, what are you eating, Carter? Yeah, that's, a, that's a mustard pretzel. That's, that's a Philadelphia delight. You can't get that anywhere but Philadelphia. Mustard pretzel. I mean, a real mustard pretzel. New York has an imitation. This is a real thing. Looks good. Want one? Yeah. Want one? Sure. Give me a couple more. Which one you want? Any special one? But, but you gotta put mustard on. All right. You want one? I'll take one, Carter. Fine. Yeah. Here, uh, put mustard on it. All right, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Wow. Stop. Hey, you want one? Stop. Want one? Yeah. Mustard time. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Mustard. <laughs> How about you, sir? You want one? It's gonna be hard you want me to take it? You want one? Okay. Does he want one? I'll give, I'll give one. I'll give one. Yeah, pay for it. Come on, man. Take it. Please, then. Now pay for it. That's called $2. It's $2. No, it's $2, no it's two dollars, right, bro? Uh, it's $2, man. The rep got it here. I'm going to pay for it, man. I'm going to pay for it. Let me pay for it. You got, you got, uh... No, no, no. 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 Put in the kitty, y'all. Oh, watch out. He gave him to me. I, I, that's just a donation, that's all. He gave him to me. Oh. <laughs> God bless you. Help us out, all right? Next time, hold on. How you doing?
Thank you. 
the Asian American communities in the area. And um, they say when an affair is um, blessed with rain, it means success and victory. So let us hope that the congressman uh, will <laughs> repeat another win. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my friends, uh, we have uh, we have lined up um, a few of uh, the community leaders of the Asian American communities to uh, give some brief remarks. But uh, I would like to brief you that uh, we are putting this uh, fundraiser, as you will see, that is black uh, blackwell. I should say for Congress Coalition of Asian Communities. Um, so uh, at least we would have to show to the congressman that we Asian Americans in the area are um, united and solid against him to, for not only to support his uh, re-election, but whatever he does, we are just behind him all the time. So ladies and gentlemen, um, before the congressman will give you a very inspiring message, I would like to call on uh, some um, community leaders uh, to give their, uh, brief remarks, say two to three minutes, uh, because we know that uh, pretty soon you will be all leaving. So we have been very much involved in the organization and creation of the Mayor's uh, Commission on Asian Pacific Affairs. I am referring to no other than uh, Dr. Ted Costillo, who is uh, representing the uh, Filipino American communities. Dr. Costillo, uh, let's welcome him with a big hand. So let us have no other than uh, Nick Kishinoi. Thank you, Fred. Congressman Blackwell, it's nice my pleasure to be here. You know, uh, you are our backbone for the Asian American Congress. I remember two years ago, Congressman Michael met with us, says, you have to unite. Valley, good sport, uh, good congressman, Lucia Blackwell, for next term to be a congressman. Thank you all of you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sandu. Um, sort of reminder, um, I mean, um, we were distributing some envelopes um, around. <laughs> I, uh, that would mean a lot uh, for the campaign of Congressman Blackwell, whatever you know, amount you can place in that envelope that we were requesting. We have, uh, we have, um, and they're distributing. We have a box there that you can place before you leave the room. Would be very thankful if uh, you won't forget that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you are aware that uh, maybe and you have read that the congressman recently returned from a trip to the Philippines, to Japan, and uh, to uh, China, and lately he was in Russia. Um, among those who were in the group who was with the, with the congressman Blackwell to the Philippines is uh, a very good friend of ours, very active in the community, and uh, much involved in the Pennsylvania Cultural Commission. I'm referring to Mr. Ernie Jenge, who will... Uh, Accomplishment to last one. A friend. French. Um, I have the honor to have uh, been invited by the congressman to be part of his delegation to the Philippines on his uh, fact-finding mission on... inform you that among the, those in the group tonight are Filipino war veterans. So they are all behind you and uh, they are veterans like you. And uh, from their group, I would like to call on Mr. Uh, Santos Delior, who is our service officer. Together, union leaders. He was a union leader down the waterfront. I was a union leader for the Labor's Construction Union 332. We was in the Korean War together. Same outfit, 2050 Vision. We boxed as kids together. I turned professional. In 1950, I won the second Army Championship. Blackwell, I don't know what he was doing then. He was up for politics then. <laughs> but he's always been a type of friend to realize and to look at a man with re not only with respect, but religion. All the Filipinos that I know and can vouch for all love God, and we respect that fact, and we are Christians. And 
black wall stands the same way as a Christian man. And as long as you got God leading you, you have no problem. And this guy, when he speaks, that's the first thing he lets you know that he is a friend of God. And that's one of the beautiful things that could hit a man's heart. And as long as you got that, I know he will win. I know he will win because he's got the good Lord on his side. How do you think he got this far? He got this far. And he's for everybody. He's not for the white, he's not for the black, he's not for the Asian. He's for everybody. Anytime a man risks his stuff, went all the way over to the Philippines. When we told him what was happening, just like the veterans, 100% veterans, disability veterans, Filipinos, that's in this country, is receiving 100% disability, but by getting paid by pesos, not American dollars. They fought in America for, for the Americans, but get paid in pesos. When we told Mr. Blackwell that, he took it up. He's been with us all the way. He's for the Asians. He's for the people. And this is why I love him, Christ loves him, and we all love him. So I'm for Lucian Blackwell. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you will notice that we have a cross-section, cross-representation of the Asian American communities. Uh, this time, uh, I would like to introduce to you one member of the Asian American community who was the first to run for uh, public office uh, to the position of city councilor of... Uh, Asian man! So much so that he is sponsored the American deal with 29... 
He has shown his uh, physical discipline and fitness by uh, being a, a champion boxer. Maybe that's important in his life. Friends, you have seen a man who has given much of his service to labor. That means that he is very much concerned with the common man. He has given a lot of his time in, poli in politics, having served as a city councilor, a state representative, and then as a city, and then as congressman. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you also to know that the congressman is a true family man, a very deeply religious man, and he always thinks and talks about God. My friends, it's therefore, we have to bring him back to Congress so that he can stop crime, he can stop uh, lawlessness, and he can work for more employment, and then he can work for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a big, big rousing welcome to Congressman Junior Master. And I, uh, I've always uh, had some warm memories of having served there because that's where I learned that people are just people. We're no different, but we might not look the same, but we're the same underneath. We all want the same good things that this earth has to offer that no one has the right to take away from us. And so I thank and praise God that he allowed me to see some things that people just dream about. In this year, in the last five months, I've gone to, to, to the Philippines, to Japan, to Korea, and to Beijing. And I've had an opportunity to meet uh, different people in an official capacity and to talk about some things that are important to this world. Uh, the one thing that I most, I uh, guess, the most impressive trip that I took was to the Philippines, where I met some Amerasian children who, who were in a sad uh, way because their fathers left them when they came back home to America. And so it's important then that we realize that they are children that belong to us, and that if they want to come home, they have the right to come home. That's not as easy as it sounds because it's a very complicated situation. And it just does not happen the way it, because someone wants it to happen. But I believe in miracles because my life is a miracle. Because I come from a poor neighborhood not too far from here. Nothing special about me. I live right around the corner. I grew up in and around these, in these areas, in this area. When this building was not here, I, I introduced the bill to build this senior citizen's home here. 15 years ago, I never realized that I one day would have an office in this building. And so you never know where God's going to send you. I never realized that I would travel around the world. I never realized I would, I would stand in Russia, in Moscow. But God, once again, God has a way of doing what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And so I believe in miracles, and I believe that uh, somehow, some way, we're going to share not the problems that we have in this world. And we have to, if we are, if we are God's children, and we, if we're going to do the right thing, and we have to do all that we can to use our good offices to bring that about. God works through his people. You see, I am a very serious believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I have never, ever realized until just a few years ago who I am and what, and, and what my mission really is. I have a small mission, and I'm similar to person in the Bible who was a weak thrasher, God called him to help Israel. That's what we're talking about here. And I'm, I'm similar to a little shepherd boy that God called one day. I'm similar to a little carpenter, a son of a carpenter that God called. Because when he calls us, he does not call us with any special talent. But he calls us and he gives us a heart to try to deal with the problems that they affect just ordinary people. I have been accused of wanting to help people who 
we should be concerned about not, and I and I thank God that they accused me of that, because that's what I, that's how I want to be seen as a person who cares. And so I want to thank you uh, for coming here tonight. Uh, it means more to me to see you here tonight, saying that you appreciate uh, what we've tried to do, than for you to make a donation. That's not important because I believe in my heart and soul that we're going to be reelected because the victory is ours. We're going to claim it. On
community, especially the, the group from New Jersey, Dr. Costillo. I think they were all out encouraging people to register and to um, become the team. Okay. Who's going to grab the audio, Andy? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful. I'm sorry, just one second. You guys for it. Okay. Let's... So tell me what your role in the campaign's been. Uh, it's basically just doing sound. Um, since I'm working full time, basically what I do, I just put it on tape. I do little things like, for, um, I, like for instance, with a congressman, things like, um, Lucian E. Blackwell can't win and will win, but you gotta register now and then vote. That kind of thing. So, you, they, so they record you and then they use you in the sound. Right, right and it just gets it just, it just gets duplicated. Okay, so tell us tell us that. So if, for people that have no idea who you are, tell us that what they do, what they have you do, and then what they use it for. Okay, okay. A sound man is a very important person. Um, if he's working directly with the candidate, he has two purposes. He serves a twofold purpose. One. He keeps, this, he keeps the, that candidate upbeat and hyped into, into the right tempo so he doesn't get discouraged because he keeps hearing your voice shouting out his name and encouraging him. Then believing him also realize that he is, yes, you're still number one. So no matter know how much negativity he may face out there, it's my job to make sure that he realizes that he's still number one. And he's the man. He's the people's man. He, or he's that pre people's candidate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's number one. Number two is also to draw the people and let them know put out the candidate. You understand where I'm coming from? So if the candidate, because at the, even as the Bible says, as a man believes, so is, as a man thinks, so is he. So that's, that's some of the things of a sound man. He has a twofold. You know what I mean? Not only does he you know what I mean, alert the public on what's going on, who that candidate is, and you know, persuasion of the candidate, but he also keeps that candidate upbeat if he's working directly with the candidate. So not, not, not only does he, does he have to be mindful of the people around that he's trying to send a message out to, but he also has to be mindful of that candidate, of this candidate. And that's what I do. Okay, now you recorded messages they use in the sound stuff, right? right. Okay, what I, what I want you to do is to do a full thing for us. You know, it's, Ooh. it's, it's a script, and I, I, I'll have a script before do me. As much, do as much as you remember. As much as I can remember, okay? All right, let me see. All right, like, like what I've done for, like, Lucian Blackwell? That Lucian? Okay. Uh, Things like, um, Lucian E. Blackwell can win and will win, but you gotta register now and then vote. Pull the big Democratic lever in full support of Lucian E. Blackwell. That kind of thing, you know what I mean? I kind of up tempo, a beat, you know what I mean? And that's what I do. I do my very best. But before I can go for any candidate, I must do a background check on the candidate, read the candidate, you know what I mean? The candidate has to first win me over. Yeah, I have to be, I have to be sold first before I can sell the people. You know what I mean, and, and, and everybody has a lot of good in them, so it's no hard, it's, no, it's not hard to sell any candidate. I'm very good at what I do. I'm a little nervous in front of the camera, but I'm very good at what I do. I'm very, very good at what I do. The public to vote for the candidate of, of my hire, and that's what I do. Why <laughs> the camera running for the beginning of the state? You didn't? No, it's just like it started again from the beginning. One more time. Oh, now, shucks. Now he's warmed up. It won't, is camera direction a problem? No, it's fine. Okay. Just try, try look, look at me when you do it, okay? Okay. Okay, one more. okay wait till ready? I say, wait till I say ready, okay? Uh, ready. Okay, tell me what you do and what it means. Okay, who I am, what I do, I'm the sound man. My name is David Johnson. I'm the sound man. I'm that little voice, that big voice that you hear in the sound cars. I'm the one that you hear that you never see. It's me. My job as a sound man is to alert the public of who my candidate is, to persuade them as strong and as hard with all my might, number one. Number two, all my job is also, if I'm working with the candidate personally, is to keep them up, upbeat, up-tempo, because when you're out there and you candidate and you campaign it, person to person, you get a lot of negativity. So my, so my job is to make sure that candidate realize that they are number one, they're the one, they're the what the people want, and they, they're it, they're all of that. They're, 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 they're the big cheese. So no matter what happens, they still feel that they're, they're, they're the one. Can give me an example of what you did in this campaign. Okay, in this, in this, in this particular campaign, I, did, I do a variety of different things. This particular campaign, we're doing Lucian E. Blackwell. And on Lucian E. Blackwell, I would do little skits like, um, for instance, Lucian E. Blackwell can win and will win, but you gotta register now and then vote. Pull that lever for Lucian E. Blackwell. That kind of thing. And when, and when you hear it echo out, that's who you hear. Just me, me, little old me. Thank you. I'm done.